everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Cynthia and today I'm sharing with you my Ruby and Pearl XO uh, month of June design team project and uh, this is one I'm really excited about. I wanted to create some ephemera. I wanted to use uh, some of the digitals that I have and I received this really pretty happy mail that had all these frames in there and um, it inspired me for this project. So what I did was use some of the photographs from various of the kits um, and then use some of the wallpapers to create a frame around those photographs and create little pieces of ephemera with it. Now, of course you can <laughs> use so many different digital prints for that. Um, I won't list all the ones that I use just because there's so many to pick from but I'll, I will of course have everything from uh, Ruby and Pearl's shop listed down below and I'm just showing you here for example so this is one of the wallpapers and ledger paper that are combined and I used the little frame uh, to and I just cut it out so it's a lot of fussy cutting if fussy cutting is not your thing perhaps this won't be the project for you but I find fussy cutting just very relaxing and it's something different to do it passes the time and it just lets my mind kind of wander different places so I did one that use the frame as an example and then the other one here uh, with the blue flowers I just fussy cutted some of the florals on one of the digital prints so there's different ways that you can kind of go about this just look for some pretty florals and uh, kind of get creative with that now these are the pieces that I'm going to be using to make some more pieces of ephemera with you. Uh, you can see here, this is what page it came from. So it had two corner pieces and then it has the one bigger uh, floral part. And then of course, there's some smaller floral arrangements like all around, but I'm not going to be using those today, but you could certainly kind of gather all of these and create a frame with those as well. And these here are the photographs that I'm picking from. Some of them are the vintage ladies. Other ones are from, I'm not sure what that kit is called, but uh, it has a bunch of little children. And uh, I just think they're so cute. <laughs> and then here, this is another example. Um, this is a frame itself, but it was just on a, um, like a, a journaling card and I cut it out and then you could place it on top of words that you want or like a book page and highlight some of the words that you uh, find meaningful and there's really just so many ways that you can kind of alter those digital prints and make them into something else. So I'm just showing you here some of the other um, prints that I was considering so pretty much pretty florals or uh, the wallpapers. This one here I thought I could even use like just just the frame, right? Because there's some wording in there. It's for I think a ballet, but um, I just thought it would be interesting to use it and frame whatever I have on my page in my journal. The whole idea here is I'm really trying to, <laughs> to use the digital, the digital prints that I have on hand and I'm so 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 tempted to go on Heather's shop and just look at all the new ones that she's put out because I've been seeing her posts and they're just so beautiful and there's so many kits that inspire me but I have such a big stack of digital prints in in my personal uh, stash already that I feel a little bit overwhelmed so I'm really trying to find different ways um, to use what I already have and um, once I feel like I've pared down enough then I'll go ahead and get kind of reward myself with some new new prints to, to work with um so here I'm I've selected a piece of a, a book page and that's gonna be my base for this piece of ephemera and I'm just going to work with the two little floral corners and I want to frame a picture. So I'm going around trying to see if there's a picture that will fit. Um, 
of course I, I don't want the florals to be on the faces <laughs> that would not that would not be really good um and this is what I'm finding that it is happening here because of just like the size of what I'm working with so then I play around with having both florals at the bottom but I don't really like the balance of that but I do really like it just on the words but I'm just looking here and uh, I'll play around a little bit more and then you'll see ultimately what I decide to do um you know when you have little pieces like that it's pleasant to just play around and try them in different places and see which arrangement works the best for you and what you end up liking the most because sometimes your original idea might actually not be the idea you end up with and you might find something even better along the way and other times you just go back to <laughs> your very first idea after trying every possible options i hope you're all doing really well i know i've been absent i there's really a lot going on in in my personal life so it's it's just a challenge but um i'm really happy to be able to at least get these projects out and it gets me inspired to to create a little bit more every time i do one of these projects i find myself um journaling a little bit more and setting a lot more time aside for creating which is time is really what i'm lacking these days <laughs> but so here you'll see that's the picture i choose i just find that those two little cuties absolutely adorable and i'm just making sure that i don't want to use them in the frame and i don't so i'm gonna go ahead and trim the paper to the size that i actually want to use and then I'll go from there to, I'll start um, gluing the pieces together. Now, I'm just going to use my glue stick for this one. Um, you can use double-sided tape as well. That would work really well. The With the glue stick, there is a little bit of moisture, so it does bend the papers a little bit. But you can just bend them back into shape and or put something heavy on them for a day and it would be fine. And now I'm just playing with my florals, making sure this is how I like it and then I'll get to gluing. one of those projects that your hands are going to be completely full of glue <laughs> and that's something I, I don't enjoy it like it if there is one thing while I craft that I could somehow prevent from happening would be glue on my fingers but I always put glue on my fingers I spread the glue with my fingers when I use my glue stick I always end up with glue on my fingers I just cannot avoid it and it drives me a little bananas, <laughs> but eh, I guess it's a small price to pay for the, out the outcomes that I end with. So just using my fingernails here to, to press that down. If you have a bone folder, you absolutely can use that. That'll work really well. Um, or even, well, depending on your scissors, but I often will use the just the, um, the handle part of my scissors as well to press on smaller little areas. And now I'm adding the floral pieces. And while I'm doing this, I am thinking, oh, well, what am I gonna do with this piece of er ephemera? What is it gonna be? Because it's cute and all, but there has to be some sort of purpose or there isn't. I mean, you could, um, You'll see this opens, so it's um, like it was two book pages together, so this becomes like almost like a little book, like if you open it. So I wanted to make a purpose out of that, but if it was just the single 
sheet, um, you could just use that and that's enough and you can use it just like an, as an illustration in your journaling or on a f future piece of ephemera that you'll create or happy mail or whatever the case may be. So you'll see here, I'm just debating again, well, I kind of like it in that corner and I like the way that frames it, but ultimately I revert back to, to my initial idea. I just, it just seemed right for this particular piece. And sometimes you have reasons, sometimes you don't. And sometimes things that you prefer, you're not going to prefer what other people are doing or, you know, maybe you thought that the other way was better than the way that I'm doing it now. And that's okay, right? That's really, that's goes hand in hand with creation and um, your own style and really finding what, what you like to do, what looks good to your eye. All right, so you saw there, it opens. So I want to put something in there. <laughs> I could do pockets. I could do a booklet that has many pages in there, or I could do just like a single lining on the inside so that you can write rather than having the, the wording from the book itself. Um, but what I choose to do is to grab one of my coffee dyed papers and I'm going to trim it to the correct size. It's going to fold in two so it's going to be like a little booklet with um, with just two pages but four back to back, right? Um, and this way it gives a little bit of room for some sentiments, for some secret journaling. Um, I really like to have those hidden journaling spots. I like to journal full on on the page but also have more uh, secret thoughts kind of hidden away or deeper thoughts or special thoughts, I guess, um, just kind of hidden away. And that's just something I really enjoy doing in my own journals. So that's what I'm going to create here. Like I mentioned, um, there's a lot going on in my life. We're actually moving again uh, to a larger space. So I don't know what my journaling space is going to be looking like once we've moved. That's still kind of up in the air. Um, we don't know the configuration of each room, like how we're going to organize things. So uh, there's lots of uh, logistics going into it. So we're just doing that this week and the next and Hopefully after that I can finally take a little breather and uh, have a little more time. But oh, with the summertime, it's doubtful. There's so many projects on the go and so many things we want to do, right? I think many of you can probably relate to that. And there's just not enough hours in the day to accomplish everything. So at least with the um, the lighter date that the days with more light <laughs> the more I don't know how to say this but there's more daylight right um that offers the opportunity to wake up a little bit well when you wake up earlier I'm a morning person but when I wake up earlier then at least I have the opportunity to journal and the possibility to film if I feel up for it so it does open up a little bit more um flexibility so I'm just using a twine here. It's a pretty sturdy twine. And uh, I'm threading it through the two pages. Um, you could use a needle if you needed to. This twine is like very stiff, like I said, so it doesn't need that. And then you'll notice here, I don't cut my twines or my ribbons until I know I have enough. I really dislike wasting, so <laughs> that's why I do it this way. Um, I kind of try to eye 
exactly how much twine or ribbons I'm going to be using so that I'm not ending up with a bunch of smaller trims afterwards that, oh, this one side was a bit too long and I trimmed off this tiny little piece because I wouldn't know what to do with all those tiny little pieces. Um, I can only use so many. So <laughs> uh, that's really why I try to do it the way that I do. And I tied that just with a little bow. Very simple. It's not very tight, but it doesn't have to be. Um, and then I'll put that to the side and get working on the frame one. So I've sped this part up a little bit um, because I play around with so many different things. I don't know what I want to do with this. At first I thought I would use this paper and then I don't because something else comes up. I try all of the um, images that I have laid out there and none of them seem right so I ended up <laughs> using something different and sometimes that's just how it goes. You try so many different options and it isn't working. It's not quite fitting your vision so um, I really encourage you if you end up stuck a little bit just to try something different and to be okay with the project kind of steering in a different way because I wasn't planning to do what I did there at all. I really wanted to use those pictures but then I had a different idea so so I'm going to use part of that book page. Um, what I'm going to do is select one of the sides that I find some words that are uh, inspiring or you know that have some meaning to me and I'm going to frame that that section of the the page anyway of the wordings because I really like the color of that book page against those flowers and the writing it just looks pretty to me it's simple but it just it does a little something so so just uh, trimming the piece there to what I actually need and you'll see me make some mistakes here <laughs> because like I said, I wasn't planning to do this. So sometimes when you're trying something for the first time, well, you'll go through some steps and then you realize, huh, I could have done this much easier and not go through all the extra little step I just did. But that's the name of the game. Learn from my mistakes. <laughs> Don't do as I do, do as I say, I guess. <laughs> So what I did, I wanted to create a tag. I I just felt like it would be so pretty. So, and I haven't created tags in a while, so I wanted to use one. So now I'm just gonna play around a little bit, try to see where I want the floral frame to be placed on that tag. Ultimately, I choose to have the little um, eyelet portion at the top showing because I wanna be able to thread a ribbon through it and um, so that means that I'm gonna want to back some of the um, floral with some book pages so that it's a little sturdier and it's not just dark white on the other side because you can see it kind of overlay um, and come out of the tag itself it's wider so first I'll go ahead and uh, ink the all of the sides on both sides of the tag and I cut through that so that you don't have to watch me do that. <laughs> and then I'll start kind of going over that logistics of um, what parts of the floral need to be um, covered. Now, here's where, had I really thought this through, I would have done this first. So I should have glued the piece that I wanted frame first that should have gone at the back of it right away and then i could have glued on the rest but i didn't do that <laughs> so so it is what it is and at that point i got a little bit lazy too with my gluing so i just put a bunch of glue on there and i knew i was gonna just trim off the rest so i'm just gonna be kind of waiting around until the glue completely dries and then I'm going to fussy cut around everything. But see, I'm having to cut through the middle there. But if I had the, the piece I want framed already glued down, I wouldn't have to do that. So I really wasn't thinking. But, you know, it happens. It's okay. 
<laughs> I think I did that in the morning. I'll give myself that excuse. So I fussy cutted the first part there at the bottom and then I know some of the sides also show so that's what I'm going to be focusing on now and I'm just using the leftovers from the bottom part to do that. Um, again, another way to be a little bit less um, wasteful, <laughs> I was thinking useful, that's not the word, um, is just really using all of those smaller pieces and not gravitating towards one new big piece. I just really try my best to end up with as little waste as I can. It's not, sometimes it makes my life a little bit harder to be honest, but I just see it as being resourceful. <laughs> so we're just playing around here, checking, and I can see it's really not that much. So those two pieces are going to be plenty and I am going to rip the bottom so that they integrate a little bit better, a little more um, organically than if it's just the straight cut. So I'll go ahead and do that, then I'll have to fussy cut around those as well. And once I've actually done that, then I'll be able to go ahead and glue the whole thing onto the tag. However, again, I'm being really uh, messy with my glue there, so because I really want all of the edges to stick on the page so I'd rather just wait for the glue to st to to dry and then fussy cut than to really kind of spend so much time trying to apply glue only where I need it so I'm going to be waiting a little bit there so I'm going to pick out a ribbon to put on the tag and um while I do that then the glue has time to to set and to to dry out now, to glue the whole thing onto the tag itself, I am going to go ahead and use some wet glue. I just think it's a little bit sturdier in this scenario, and both, since both pieces I'm using are now a little bit thicker, the wet glue is going to work really well, but again, you can use any um, adhesive that you would prefer. And 
I think that's going to be pretty much it. Uh, I am going to ink around the frame a little bit just to merge the two papers that I glued together a little bit more. But um, that's pretty much it for me today. I really hope that you enjoyed this chatty video. I hope you're all doing really well and I thank you so much for being here with me. And um, I wish you all a great day and we'll speak again soon. Bye for now. Thank you.